Are you new to HubSpot and need some help navigating inside the tool to find out where you need to go? This tutorial will guide you through just that. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot's a powerful tool, but if you don't know what the interface is like, or if you're new or need a refresher, sometimes you just need someone to take a look around with you and kind of show you the lay of the land. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the HubSpot interface, and this is called a HubSpot tutorial for beginners because I'm just gonna give you a quick insight as to what's inside HubSpot, where you can find different things, and then if you have any additional questions, feel free to comment on this video, uh, drop us a message so we can help um, answer any of those questions or maybe create a future video to get those uh, those insights to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and um, right now I'm actually demoing this on a test portal so that way I can drive through all the features but we don't have any uh, proprietary information inside of this uh, portal. So when you log into HubSpot um, you have different uh, areas here that you have uh, essentially they're, they're uh, drop down menus with features and uh, you'll find what you need inside each one of these. So real quick um, under contacts you're gonna find um, any person that happens to be tied to HubSpot you can dive into individual contact records. If, um, if you've used a tool like Salesforce before, um, you'll know that they organize, or other, other CRMs, they organize their content or their contacts by companies and then contacts. And in HubSpot, they see each one of these contacts as an individual contact record. And then if the, do the domain, which would be right here, uh, happens to match the company, then they match the two together. Otherwise, they stay separate. So you can see any of the contacts you have here if you want to set up a filter. Uh, so let's say you only want to see contacts with uh, a certain company. You only want to see contacts that have been created in the last 20 days uh, you can create a filter and then all of the ways you can create those filters are here and then if you want to see any of the saved filters you can see them here you can create filters yourself and then others can create filters and share them with you so that's where you would find any filters or views all in that context area here's where you're also going to find companies so if you're looking for a particular company maybe you're new to a team and you want to you want to know hey who have we worked with in the past um, you've got companies here and then again, we can add a filter. So if I wanted to create a filter of um, life cycle stage, and this is how we determine if someone is a prospect or a customer. There's all different levels of uh, life cycle stages determined in HubSpot. If you have any questions about life cycle stage, check the description of this video and we will post a link on how to learn more about those life cycle stages. Because if you're in HubSpot and you're new and this is a tutorial for beginners, you may want to refresh your knowledge on what those life cycle stages are. So if I wanted to see a life cycle stage of someone who happens to be a customer, I would check this box and then I can see anybody. Again, we're in a test portal. So no customers in this portal, but if they did, they would exist in that filter. So that's where to find uh, some of that information, maybe from the past to get caught up with your sales team uh, inside of the uh, in HubSpot. The activity feed is going to show you all of the activity that's happening for you inside of the platform. And then list is going to be, um, again, if you are new to HubSpot, and this again, this is a tutorial for beginners. If you don't have access to some of these things, it may be because you haven't been given access to those areas by your admin. So we'll, we'll drive through this, the settings in just a second here if you happen to have the admin privileges uh, inside of HubSpot. So lists would be where we have static and um, dynamic lists. Static lists would be people that are added to a list based on a criteria that you can't use a field for. So let's say, for example, you uploaded a list of everyone who came from Johnny's old company and now he's gonna prospect them at his new company. We'd call that Johnny's prospect list, but maybe we're just gonna create that and it's gonna stay the same. If you have questions about static or dynamic lists or what we call active lists, again, we have a video about that. We'll put a little tool tip here to help get you over to that place but this is where you're gonna find lists. Um, conversations, this is where that inbox of the support conversations go. So if your company is using a support email, Facebook messages, um, wanting to manage all of that in one place, that's gonna be here in inbox. And again, if you don't have access to this, it might be because that is not turned on for you. Um, chat flows is gonna be that, um, you know, what happens when someone chats with you on the website, what uh, message do they get, and that follows. Um, snippets are going to be how you create short codes and then they expand into um, a little bit longer sentences. Essentially, um, this is like writing shorthand. So I'm gonna create a snippet. It might be pound sales follow-up. And then that first sentence might be, you know, hi, John, great talking with you today. Just wanted to follow up on our call. If I say that after every single message, that's gonna be here in snippets. And then templates are going to be the places where we create those templates um, 
And again, if someone has shared a bunch of templates with you, if you're in a sales organization where um, you have templates that have been proven to be effective, those might be shared with you here in this template interface. I know for me, when I was jumping back into HubSpot, one of the things that caught me off guard was I was thinking marketing templates or sales templates, and I went looking for them under these two tabs, but it's actually here under conversations and templates because they figure it's something that's a one-to-one -one conversation or a one-to-one -one communication. That's probably where they put it under there. Anyway, don't get lost when you're looking for it. So under the marketing tab, this is where if you happen to work in the marketing department and you're in HubSpot, this is where you're gonna find all of your information. Um, you're gonna find, if you're set up on the HubSpot blog, it's gonna be here. This is where your landing pages are going to be. And then if your website's hosted on the HubSpot uh, COS or CMS, that's gonna be here in website as well. So each one of these, you'll get to the, you know, if you wanna update a blog article, if you wanna create a new landing page, um, you can create those in the landing page areas and we've got videos about how to do just that as well. Now, um, ads, if you wanna sync your ads, um, Google, Facebook, or um, LinkedIn to HubSpot, that would be here. If you're looking at ads that are already set up by your team, that would be here as well. Um, email would be email campaigns. So I've got, I can sort by different campaigns. I can look at the different types of emails. Again, if you're looking for an email, let's say, let's say you've got an automated email that goes out in response to um, someone downloading an offer. It would be most likely labeled as automated, so you can sift and sort inside your email uh, here as well. Now, if I wanted to look into the social, if you use um, HubSpot to plan social, you're gonna be able to see uh, social posts that went out through the platform and then any that are planned. Um, files and templates, this would be where you have those design tools. Now design tools would be where I'm going to um, change out different um, modules inside of my um, email template design, landing page design. Uh, files would be where I'm storing um, things like photos or PDFs. Anything that you have uploaded into an email would be found uh, in files or uploaded to a web page would be found in files. And then this HubDB um, would be where you're editing uh, some of that code for your website if you host on, on, uh, on HubSpot. Now lead capture, if you happen to have a CTA in a blog, so let's say that you have a CTA in a blog that says, hey, download this content offer here. If it's made in CTAs, um, or if it's made with the HubSpot CTA, you're gonna find it in this CTAs area. Uh, we have another video about how to do CTAs, so they can range from doing these little just tool tips, or little, little uh, hypertext links, to actually placing whole images in, uh, but you'd find those here in the CTAs area. And then forms. So if you're using HubSpot forms, any forms that currently exist in your website, let's say you're new to the marketing team and you need to go update this form on this landing page, you're gonna find that form here. When you up, update the form, um, it'll actually update the code that's already embedded in your website. So that makes it pretty, uh, pretty nifty and handy. Uh, planning and strategy, uh, there's a calendar planning component in here if you wanna plan out your campaigns, and you can do that. Um, the caveat with planning inside of HubSpot is when you plan something, it does become a draft. So it, it, it makes it good for planning inside of HubSpot, but you may find some limitations on you know, additional content you're doing outside the platform. However, um, if your team has, uh, you know, hey, go look at that calendar in HubSpot for what's coming up in our blog, this would be where you would find that. Um, the other thing is uh, you can look at what campaigns are running. So again, if your team is using the campaigns function and you want to get, get a good kind of lay of the land on what they're doing, you can use campaigns. Um, SEO, we have a whole video about how to use the SEO cluster tool, but essentially if you're in content and you're looking for, hey, what is kind of our content strategy? If you're using the um, SEO tool, you'd actually have uh, different topics that are loaded in here, and then you'd be able to go in and see what additional blog posts are being written about that topic, and then the links to relevant uh, blogs on your site. So it, again, watch that other video if you're really interested in this, but you'd get a sense of what your content strategy is if your team has set up the SEO tool inside of HubSpot. And the last piece is gonna be projects. Um, HubSpot projects are a way for you to um, kind of get a step-by-step -step on what to do to do X. So they've got some um, projects loaded in here. Uh, they've got templates. Um, we have a whole video about this as well. But if someone says, hey, newbie to HubSpot, go in and load the project about how to define your strategy and plan, you would head over to marketing, planning and strategy, and projects. That one's buried a little bit deeper, so it makes sense if you, you know, are clicking around trying to find it, but that's where it lives. So in the sales tab, this is gonna be where most sales teams live, in addition to, like I said, this templates, um, one that kind of sneaks over to the left. 
Um, but in sales, we have our deals. We have the tasks associated with our particular um, follow-up. And then we've got um, documents, which would be, well, let's just jump over there. So inside of deals, um, this would be if your team has already set up deals and they've got um, a deal flow essentially set up here and you happen to be a user, you can jump in and sometimes depending on your team structure, you can see what others are doing. Sometimes you can only see your deals. Again, permission levels vary by organization, by what they wanna do, but you'll be able to see essentially if you have deals, you'll be able to see those deals in here as well. Um, tasks would be any tasks that are assigned to me from other people or tasks that I have assigned myself. So from this view here, I am all caught up on my tasks, great. But I can actually uh, then go in and create new tasks and assign them to other people, assign them to myself, and then uh, you would see a nice dashboard of all those tasks here. Um, if we go into documents, documents are going to be a way for us to upload um, content so that we can use it across the organization. So if you are again new to the sales team and someone says, hey, go and find that PDF that's approved about product XYZ, if your team's using documents and once items are in documents, they are considered to be approved and only new documents are updated with like, let's say the current version, you might go to the documents and take a quick review of what documents are available to you as a sales professional. And again, from the marketing team perspective, you may wanna go in and see, are we using documents, are we not? Um, so that's a good uh, way to use it. When you do use documents, a really cool thing here, I would say, I think Salesforce does this as well, but um, you're able to see then the utilization of those documents, how many times they've been clicked, and some of that performance data around them. Um, sales meetings, this is a really good one if you happen to be booking a lot of sales calls, a lot of sales uh, like Zoom calls, um, and people are booking directly on your calendar. So if one of the first things you need to do in getting into HubSpot is, hey, go set up that meetings link, you're gonna find that under sales meetings. We've got a whole video on how to set up your sales meeting links, both for yourself, and then we've got one on how to do it like as a team. So how do I make sure I get everyone's calendar? Um, we've got videos on both of those, but that's where to find this. And then playbooks would be, um, if you happen to have marketing enterprise, playbooks would be where you find information that you might consider to be um, part of your sales funnel. You might have, hey, here's the swipe file to use when you are sending outbound email campaigns. Um, here's the way that we follow up with the prospect. All of that would be in uh, playbooks and um, you'll find it there. Um, service is gonna be where you have uh, tickets. So if someone happens to submit a support request um, and you log it as a ticket and assign it to someone, that's gonna be here in under the service. And then if you happen to have service hub, you'll have a whole separate area of uh, drop downs here that you would have access to as well. Um, one of the first things that people go looking for if they're in marketing um, is they look for these workflows. Now workflows, since they're a marketing automation, you might think, oh, I might find them over under marketing. Nope, they're gonna be here under automation. So under this workflow is you're gonna see anything that's been set up as a workflow for your organization um, and it might include, so here we just have a couple of examples, but um, it might be something like uh, you know asset delivery. When someone goes to this page and they fit this criteria and they download this, this person gets a notification, the person who downloads the book happens to get an email, we get a text message to call them. So that's kind of what a workflow does. So you can kind of take a, a quick view in here. They just recently created folders as an opportunity to organize your workflows. So one thing, if you're new to HubSpot and you're new to your company, you may find that your workflows are wonderful or you might, might find that they are incredibly disorganized and in badly need of uh, folders. So um, that's probably for you to find out. Um, sequences are going to be, um, if you happen to be in sales and you're sending out sequences um, to people one-to-one, -one, let's say email first, two days later, then follow them on LinkedIn, email, then call them two days later. That's where sequences is. Um, so again, you might think this falls under sales, but again, it falls under this automation tab. Now reports are gonna be the last piece here. Uh, our analytics tools, this is where things might be buried for you. So if you go looking for some, uh, let's say key um, features that you've heard about and you can't find them in the nav, they might be here in this analytics tools area. So you might look at competitors, we can load in competitors. Uh, prospects is going to be the people that are visiting your website. We've got a whole video about how to look at the people that are visiting your website, 
but that's what that is. And then this URL builder. So if you were creating campaign URLs, wanting to track what traffic's coming from where and make sure you link it to a relevant campaign, very important for analytics, uh, you can go into this tracking URL bu builder as well. Um, so this one is one that, you know, for me, I use HubSpot every day, but man, sometimes I forget where this is and always remembering that it's under this reports tab in analytic tools. Um, so we've got a bunch of analytics in here and you can go in and see the performance of pretty much anything that's running uh, within the HubSpot enterprise. In this case, it's enterprise, but within the things you have access to in your subscription level. So you're gonna find that here under analytics tools. Now, a couple key things if you're a tutorial or if you're a beginner, this tutorial will we'll walk through a few of the settings. So if you're a beginner and you're like, hey, I wanna go and uh, update my you know, profile and make sure that my um, email signature is correct, um, depending on whether or not you have admin access, this probably won't look the same for everybody that's watching, but um, you've got some basic settings for your preferences. We've got basic information, which basic information is going to be, what's my phone number, what's my um, you know, uh, language, and then I can edit my email signature right in here. And then uh, at the end of every single um, email that comes out of HubSpot, there's these like, there can spam at compliant um, unsubscribes, but you can choose what you want that subject or that um, line to say at the bottom of the email. So that's where you change that here as well. Um, you can change how often you get notified. So, you know, if you get too many emails from HubSpot, how do I change that? That's gonna be here in the settings area under notifications. And then you've got security, um, which is going to be, um, you know, how many, uh, do I have two-factor auth authentic, I can't say that word, that's a hard word. Do I have two-factor authentication uh, turned on? Do I, uh, in this case, you know, using Google Authenticator uh, enabled? And then um, we've got some backup code. So this is probably something I'm guessing mandated by your company um, and how they do security measures, but um, here in the security area. And don't make me say authentication, evidently, again, because I can't say it. Um, we're gonna go to the account defaults then. So these things you'd have access to if you have an admin seat um, in these certain areas. So if you're looking for you know, contacts and companies and how to add um, different properties to those, you would go here under the contacts and companies. Um, anything you're um, going to be setting for the, the conversation. So this is also gonna be where you set up your chat bots um, and then who gets notified, so on and so forth. Um, domains and URLs. So if you happen to be moving to a new domain, um, you're gonna be working here. And then um, if you're kind of just curious how things are set up from a marketing perspective, if you have access to this, that's where you would find this as well. Um, any integrations that you're looking to uh, pull into the system would be found, uh, found here. Um, under marketing, we've got um, some key things here. Let's say you're new to the team and no one's ever really gone through the process of uh, creating a verification of your email on your domain. So we'd actually do that here inside of marketing. And we've got um, email subscription types. You've got the footer. All this kind of stuff is set up inside of uh, this setup area. Um, and then uh, one of the most important things I think is probably the users and teams. So users and teams would be, you know, who all here has been invited to this portal? Um, what are their roles and responsibilities? And again, you can view this as an admin, uh, maybe not as much as a new user. So um, that's a quick run around through uh, HubSpot. If you are new to the system and we didn't cover something or you're looking for a feature and you still can't find it, um, drop us a comment below, let us know, because this tutorial is for beginners, but you know what? They're always changing things inside the software, so you know maybe we missed something. Thanks for watching. For more tips, how-tos, and HubSpot hacks, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next week.